I'll just talk and I guess you interrupt me yeah, and I'll yeah. just give milk. But um, okay, so with young people, uh, heart disease is it does happen. It's obviously not as common as in old as people who are not young. Usually, studies define young um, heart disease, heart attacks, young as forty to forty-five years old. That's how most studies have defined it, and uh, generally above that age is considered you know normal age. And now, in that young population, people still develop atherosclerosis. Um, atherosclerosis is the development of cholesterol plaque in the arteries, and that plaque gradually builds until the time that it blocks and causes angina, or it can be smaller be unstable, rupture, and cause a heart attack. Now, there are studies that show that people, um, even as early as 15, 20 years old, have some development of cholesterol plaque in their arteries, usually more in men than women. But in people 30 to 34 years old, close to 20% of men already have plaque developed, and up to 8% of women will already have some level of plaque developed. Um, and these were autopsies. This was an autopsy study. But on the same lines, there is a very, very large study, Framingham Heart Study, it's called 10-Year Follow-Up, where it showed that in people 30 to 34 years old, close to 12% of um, – uh, 12 out of 1,000 men actually had heart attacks, and 5 out of 1,000 women had heart attacks in that age group. So it does exist, and there, there are many risk factors – and the risk factors that cause heart attack, stroke, and cholesterol buildup in adults still apply to younger people. But nowadays, those risk factors are starting to show up at earlier ages. Like you said, the obesity ep um, epidemic, uh, smoking, cholesterol, diabetes, and sedentary lifestyle, those all contribute to developing cholesterol plaque. And it tends to now is affecting people younger and younger than it was in the past. Not to mention family history. That's one of the most important risk factors for premature or young um, heart disease, um, heart disease in young people. And there's the genetic component of having uh, decreased cholesterol metabolism or having blood vessels that are more prone to developing plaque. But there also tends to be um, a, 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 a nurture issue with that too, where if someone already has those diseases in their adult years, they have certain lifestyles that often get passed down to the kids and the next generation. So they tend to develop that disease earlier on. So when you said, I'm sorry, uh, when you said family history, did you mean family history of early onset heart disease or, or early heart attack or family history yeah, or, of specific to yeah, what? Just family history of heart disease. Okay. So history of heart disease still uh, carries uh, a risk. Now family history of premature heart disease carries a much higher risk. Right. And that's likely because they have a genetic component on top of their own lifestyle choices. So certainly um, family history of premature heart disease carries a very increased risk. And then also just all the risk factors that apply, they are almost compounded with that risk factor. And now with our new, um, all the epidemics in uh, modern era leads to even more and more um, young people having heart disease. So it's very, very important for us to I, try to identify that and uh, attack these risk factors early on because too often we say oh you're only 30 you have nothing to worry about but that's the data that i just presented and what, everything we're talking about shows that that's not the case people start developing plaque by the time they're 20 and people can have clinically relevant disease by the time they're 30 or even 40 and we need to do our best to prevent that from happening which is getting and attacking those risk factors early when people are young in their 20s 30s and seeing a doctor and having those things treated if needed to be aggressive with primary prevention, which is treating before the disease and preventing it versus secondary prevention, which is treating it after the disease has happened and avoiding a second complication. So a young adult should obviously get his regular checkup uh, and, and look for uh, mark the red, well, cholesterol and uh, every, every normal uh, checkup for young people as well as older folks will have the, the blood screen, the, the cholesterol, uh, the EKG, what have you. So, it's so, the, it's so the every young person should know their numbers. So right. they should have four numbers that they know. They should know what their blood pressure is. Right. They should know what their lipid panel is. They should know what their hemoglobin A1C is, which is a marker of sugar. And they should know what their BMI is. All four of those things they should know. Uh, um, up to, after the age of 20, 25, every adult should know those four things. 
And if any of those are not well controlled, use uh, lifestyle changes to get that better. And if your physician decides it's appropriate, medications as well. And, and, and I, you know, I was looking at two years ago, there was this, a study that was done, it was published by the Heart Association, well, it's on the, uh, yeah, Circulation, the American Heart Association's uh, journal. A uh, study they did from 95 to 2014, almost 20 years, of, hosp of those 28,000 people hospitalized, hospitalized for heart attacks, the results showed 30 percent of those patients were 35 to 54 age years old. Yep. I mean, at, that third, at under 55, four, that's pretty amazing, right? I mean, I guess, and more of them were women, They're, they said, and this is like on the American Heart, heart org. so uh, is that fit with what you're, with, with what you're seeing? Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it also depends on where, you know, where those hospitals were uh, mm -hmm. geographically. But certainly, yes, I mean, um, from 50 to 55, 50 to 60, that, and especially in males, that's the main, the main patient population that gets affected by heart disease. And now we even said that, you know, young is defined as less than 40, less than 45, but 30 to 50 is right there. Right, yeah. And I, and I think, yeah, and once again, I, I think the, the obesity epidemic, it's still an epidemic. It may be getting worse now with, with, with the pandemic. I mean, I know... You know, yeah, sedent sedentary lifestyles. Yeah, yeah. and obesity uh, goes hand in hand with many risk factors. So right. obesity in itself is a risk factor because of its negative implications to cholesterol metabolism, blood pressure. But then also the things that lead to obesity and obesity goes hand in hand with, right. which is eating too much calorie in, not enough exercise, which all of that contributes to inflammation in the body, which increases the development of plaque and unst and destabilizes plaque. Um, obesity is also linked with diabetes and increased sugar intake and decreased sugar metabolism and insulin resistance. And all that sugar floating through the body attacks those blood vessels and makes them more prone to developing cholesterol plaque, which is unstable and rupturing. And, um, and of course, cholesterol. And, and in itself, just exercise. There's studies that show that exercise in itself decreases inflammation and decreases um, risk of heart attack just from the acts of exercise, not actually losing weight, that also has its own benefit, but the actual effect of aerobic exercise. Well, we preach this almost every, every other article. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a sec. I hope people are getting the message. You're like, you're like you know this all. You're, I already know. Like, I, I, I practice it, man. I'm, you know, I'm up there. I'm getting, <laughs> every day. Uh, but, doctor, are, are young people getting it? Is my, I, I don't know. I know when you're young and you think you can live forever and, you know, I don't know. Are young people getting it? Uh, you know, I don't know. We try here, but... The problem. Um, young people still aren't getting it. There's so many young people who are obese, um, who smoke, uh, who eat sugar and cholesterol, fatty foods, and um, a lot of people aren't getting it, and then that's why we have this problem. And uh, We really need to, all of us, especially in the healthcare field and others, need to do even more to try to educate the kids. And, you know, I think... The American Heart Association has a very good simple seven, which is simple seven lifestyle choices and ways to really improve your health. But these are things that need to be emphasized to the kids, kind of like the D.A.R.E. campaign back when I was a kid. Um, these healthy lifestyle choices, needs to, you need to get to the kids in middle school, high school, college, and let them know that, you know, at 20 years old, you are, you're not indestructible. You're developing plaque, cholesterol, and you're already on the way to heart attack and stroke. I, I, I warned my sons who are in their twenties to, you know, keep an. I mean, they're all in good weight and everything, but they gotta, you know, watch that red meat and all that stuff. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful. A, I tell a lot of interesting yeah. stuff coming with um, diets. You know, Mediterranean diet, very, very good. Oh, yeah. Plant-based diets are starting to show a lot of it, but all in all, calorie control, more saturated fats, and increasing vegetables. It's all the easy stuff that we know. Be doing it. That's the thing. We, you know, most people know this, but <laughs> I guess I don't yeah. know. When you're young, you think you live forever. I guess. Uh, yeah. And COVID, uh, and it, uh, you know, we've written about COVID and the heart, and you know, the myocarditis and all that. And uh, but in terms of young people and, and COVID and, and heart disease, is there anything that we uh, that we should know about at this point? I know there's a lot of studies out there that are still yeah. coming in. So, uh, uh, 
a lot of people, all age groups are getting affected by COVID and there are myocarditis, increased risks of blood clots and really just due to the inflammatory cytokine surge. But it looks like the mortality rate is very, very low for people under the age of 40. And it's usually when you're elder, have more inflammation, more risk factors. So you know, I don't really have too much to comment on the younger with COVID because there's not too much data out there. And it's, it's you know, we're kind of learning as we go. But it looks like young people are more more protected um and we don't know you know if we check troponins on every single covid person would they have some subtle myocarditis i mean we just don't know we just know who comes to the hospital who's sick enough all right and uh i don't know if you if you had a, any bullet items or, pre- or part of a presentation you, you you can email us or some, uh, uh that for that webinar you did uh, whatever you sure. can send my way or studies or anything uh or send to carmen she'll relate to me uh okay that will be helpful it'll, it'll be great sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll do. Uh, appreciate it. And is there, did I miss anything? Anything important that you want to say? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, uh, did I? Did I? Was that what you're expecting? Yeah, I, no, I no. I, yeah, I mean, but you know, we uh, we we write about this all the time, and I, I just want to. I guess it's like you said. It's not getting. They're still not quite listening. They're <laughs> they're still not quite getting it. It's the big point uh, we want to make yeah. too, because there's still the the uh, the diabetes, the the, the pre diabetes. Yeah. I mean, the uh, obesity and the, yeah, the diabetes is still. You know, the other point I could actually, I could make is other than all of that, other point that we, you know, is people should seek out their doctor, their cardiologist, their primary care doctor, and know their numbers. If you're, if you're above the age of 30 and you don't know more numbers, your lipid can only pay once a week. Hold on, wait. Carmen? Uh, Carmen? Those, that's a, can you mute your... Carmen? Oh, can, I'm sorry, what did you say? Can you mute? I think it's coming at your... This, Yes. Please, uh, I think there's... Okay, doctor, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I was just saying that, you know, we should still have, we should emphasize to all the young adults um, and even older adults to know those four numbers and they absolutely have to get those checked every year. And the other message would be, um, for some reason, the media or whoever has really put a bad name to statins, right. statin therapy, and statins are very, very helpful. They have a almost 30 to 40 percent risk reduction in development of heart attack and stroke they are the best thing we can do for primary prevention and the side effect profile is very very limited people for some reason are very afraid of side effects the side effects are very minimal to non-existent and certainly if they occur reversible and transient for the most part and they really save lives and for some reason statins have gotten a bad rap and we should have we should try to do our best to also um, discourage patients from being, you know, afraid of statins for wrong reasons. Okay. And I guess that would be my last message. All right, great. Uh, that's great. Uh, and uh, yeah, send send along anything you think can help uh, from your presentation, and uh, I think we'll, do. we'll get back to you with uh, we'll put together something and get back to you for your review, for your review. Okay. And I, and I appreciate it, doctor. And I'm sorry, Carmen, if you're on. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm here. I just had, um, John, just uh, for us, I guess for our um, sakes, can, what do you think about linking the heart risk assessment as kind of like a CTA for this one, just so people have that resource to take that test and see um, if they're a high or moderate risk for developing heart disease? Uh, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's our online risk assessment, right? Is it? Yes, is it yes. The- I actually had Peter link it to the one that Dr. Montana did um, recently. Okay. But I think with everything that Dr. Rambatla is talking about, it would be a nice, just an additional resource for the reader to have. Yeah, if you're, um, uh, so you answer a couple, of qu- a few questions to put your, see what risk level you're at if you're overweight. Or- yes, and then it'll trigger, just as an FYI doctor, it'll trigger a notification to the person that's taking the test and it will give them what their risk is. Anyone that is considered a moderate or high risk gets Uh a referral to a PCP and then after that they may or may not get referred to a a cardiologist. So that's just another layer of of ways that we, you know, promote um, our employee docs. So I think it's a nice way of, you know, if a, doc, if a patient doesn't have a cardiologist that they could see and they're concerned, just another way of a potential referral for you. That's excellent. That's yeah, I know. 
whatever tools we can give them that's, that's made easy. Whatever tools we can. Easy yeah. to, uh, to use and uh, that's great. No, that, that, would, that would be great. Yeah. Oh, very good. Thank you. All Bob. right. Appreciate Thank you, guys. It. Appreciate it. Take care. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.